Hello, I have returned. <laughs> After many months of absence, I have finally decided to give this another crack because I've really, really been wanting to, for one, but also it's just like, it's been long enough that now I'm like, okay, I, I have replenished my ideas in my energy store and there's something recently that happened that I was excited about. And that was the recent Venus-Saturn conjunction in Pisces that happened, I want to say like two weeks ago now? A little less, week and a half ago. Um, yeah, but basically like around March 21st, 22nd-ish, Venus in Pisces was exactly conjunct Saturn in Pisces, and on March 22nd, 2024, Hosier, the Irish musician, released a uh, an EP of like songs that had been cut from his most recently released album, and uh, the so the album was Unreal Unearth, but the EP that he just released is called Unheard it's the unheard songs that were considered for that album I believe and anyway so the only song from it that I've listened to so far is Too Sweet and the reason for that is that Too Sweet happened to be the first one that I heard it got suggested to me um, I heard it and there's this thing that happens when I find a song that I like and that is that I must listen to it on repeat and I don't want to listen to anything else because my brain is just trying to fully absorb, assimilate, and become one with the like new song that I'm really into. You know, like I'm like, this is this is the only thing I want to listen to for like a couple of weeks. <laughs> no, I but I'll usually like I'll have like two songs that I'm rotating between sometimes. It's like a phase thing. Like sometimes I'll be listening to all sorts of new music and like no repeats or like only like repeating like playlists or something, but sometimes I will be listening to songs endlessly. And right now I'm on one of those phases. I can't do new music right now. I am just listening to single songs on repeat. On repeat. <laughs> uh, so Too Sweet by Hozier is the most recent one that this has happened to me with. And it's interesting to me because this song was released on the day of the Venus Saturn conjunction in Pisces and it is so Venus Saturn like the themes and the lyrics just are associated with so many of those kinds of themes so I guess I want to go over it lyric by lyric and discuss how the lyrics sort of embody that Venus Saturn theme for me <laughs> okay so First verse. It can't be said I'm an early bird. It's 10 o'clock before I say a word. Baby, I can never tell. How do you sleep so well? You keep telling me to live right, to go to bed before the daylight, but then you wake up for the sunrise. You know you don't gotta pretend. Baby, now and then. Okay, let's pause there with that first verse because now the chorus is gonna hit. So, right away, we have the themes of people with two different lifestyles. Uh, like a morning bird type of person versus a night owl sort of person. Hozier is singing as if he is the night owl kind of person. Uh, he says, it's 10 o'clock before he says a word. I don't know if that means 10 a.m. or 10 p.m., but either way, mood. Me too, dude. Um, but he's talking to his lover. Baby, I can never tell. How do you sleep so well? You keep telling me to live right. All right? So here's the first sort of like hint we get about like the Venus versus Saturn themes. Because Venus is like a, the goddess of like traditionally like art, harmony, beauty, nature, health. The things in life that create that are perceived as like good or beneficial to us 
in like a physical, tangible, or pleasurable, enjoyable way. That's Venus's sort of domain. And she w it was like exalted in Pisces for that. And so, and she was exalted in Pisces for that. So it's like when a planet is in the sign that it's considered exalted in, the thinking goes that it is most resourced it is the most resource that it could be, but not in a way that it's necessarily comfortable with. It has maybe like different or like specialized tools that are in some ways have greater potential than the tools that they're most comfortable with. So that would be Venus and its domicile signs of Taurus or Libra. That would be where Venus has the tools that she's comfortable with. But in exaltation in Pisces, she's working with tools that are, I guess, trying to push her potential, but they require a, like a little bit of extra challenge to work with. So the theme that I'm immediately seeing here is that the speaker's lover, the lover is embodying this Venus in Pisces where she's like working hard to achieve the good things in life, but she's doing it via the method of Saturn, right? So she's using, Saturn is like, you know, it's like discipline, hard work, restrictions, limitations, it's being meticulous, you know? So Venus is going about achieving its highest sort of potential in Venus's mind of like, say, living right by going to bed before the daylight and then waking up for the sunrise. So Venus has... So Venus has discipline here. Venus, you'll see more as I read through the lyrics, but, you know, so this is like a Venus who is using Saturnian means in order to achieve these sort of higher goals. But Hozier, the speaker's side, is singing about being a night owl, not an early bird, 10 o'clock before you say a word. And now let's go into the pre-chorus, because he goes, baby now and then, don't you just want to wake up dark as a lake, smelling like a bonfire lost in a haze? If you're drunk on life, babe, I think it's great. But while in this world, dot dot dot. So here, Hozier speaker is introducing the sort of like vibe of staying out late, smelling like a bonfire. So this is implying like either smoking, you know, being surrounded by smoke or literally going out to bonfires in the middle of the night. So like socializing or partying at night. And then says, if you're drunk on life, babe, I think it's great. So being drunk on life, to me at least, also implies a sort of like avoidance of substances of like, you know, that's of saying something like, you know, like, I don't need to do drugs to have fun. I'm high on life. That kind of vibe. Right. So Hozier is saying that his lover is like this, but that he is not. So then we can say that Hozier is representing a Saturn figure who is acting through the mechanism of Venus. So a Venusian Saturn. So this is a Saturn that is not disciplining, not restricting, but is going towards other significations that are also traditionally given to Saturn, which is things like laziness which is like not really a concept that I believe in because I think, you know, like laziness is measured in contrast to whatever society deems is unlazy. Like, but the thing, the um, type of thing that you have to do to not be lazy is highly variant from society to society, culture to culture, from time period to time period. And I personally don't think that it's like admirable or virtuous to like break your back chasing capital for your whole life 
and restricting yourself from enjoying the common day-to-day -day things in the world, so... That's just my opinion, though. <laughs> but anyway, so Hozier is embodying a sort of like more relaxed, laid back sort of like, I'm going to take it slow. I'm going to go at my pace. I'm not going to hold myself to a rigorous, I have to wake up here and here in order to be good kind of lifestyle. And so with that we get like the other side of Venus as being like a very indulgent and sensuous and sensual hedonistic figure mythologically where she is in touch with like the lush verdant enjoyable pleasures of life that you can see smell hear taste touch feel you know things that are very very physical and so instead of Saturn aiming for the goals of Venus, this is Venus aiming for the goals of Saturn. And in this case, the goals of Saturn being to make the most of time, not to, this is like a very Saturn and Pisces theme also, is not to enforce rigid boundaries of time upon yourself. Saturn is time. But Pisces is a mutable water sign ruled by Jupiter. It's fluid, fluid, fluid. And its value system is not very, like, minute, detailed, scheduled. That's like a Mercury thing. That's why Mercury is considered to be in fall in Pisces. It's Pisces and Saturn combined to create a figure whose sense of time is and inherently must be fluid and changeable and malleable, malleable. Time cannot be held to be some sort of crystallized, rigid structure the way Saturn and Aquarius might have had it be. Saturn in Pisces is like a whale. It's funny because I myself was like reading Moby Dick recently and then I met someone else at an astrologer's meetup and they also said that they were reading Moby Dick and it was like we're we're feeling those vibes because like the so the Saturnness of Moby Dick is like in the imagery first of all of the whale right because the whale is like this very very large mammal and it's it's like, uh, at least for like baleen whales, like the way they feed is through their like filter feeding. Like they just kind of sift water through their teeth and catch plankton and microscopic organisms and accumulate lots of those. They passively accumulate nutrients. So that's a Saturn and Pisces thing. So we have that sort of slow moving on scales that might be difficult to understand for most people because like Pisces is ruled by Jupiter and so it's a sign that has a very zoomed out perspective. It's a place where it's more applicable to measure time in aeons or eras or stages or phases rather than through like rigid clock time and you know, timetables and measurements and stopwatches and, you know, things that are hard concrete numbers. Pisces does not lend itself well to hard concrete numbers in its nature. So Hosher is this Saturnian Venusian figure, this Venusian Saturn figure, as I keep trying to say while his lover is this Saturnian Venus figure. She is aspiring to those high ideals of living according to rigid guidelines that are considered good and uh, trying to live life in a disciplined way. But then we go into the chorus and Hozier's speaker says, but while in this world, I think I'll take my whiskey meat my coffee black 
and my bed at three. You're too sweet for me. You're too sweet for me. And then repeat. But, so there we go, like, being a Venusian Saturn figure, figure taking the, like, Venus uh, uh, indulgent hedonistic side and combining it with Saturn, which is, like, whiskey neat, like, that's a very, like, a bitter, slow me down kind of drink. That's Saturnian, because Saturn is about slowing things down. Taking coffee black. Bitterness and darkness are also themes that are associated with Saturn in astrology. As well as going to bed late. I take my bed at three. Insomnia? Very much a Saturn disorder. <laughs> but also just being a night owl. <laughs> Sorry. But also just being a night owl and living life in communion with the dark time of the day. And then the next verse goes, I aim low, I aim true, and the ground's where I go. I work late where I'm free from the phone and the job gets done. But you worry some, I know. But who wants to live forever, babe? You treat your mouth as if it's heaven's gate, the rest of you like you're the TSA. I wish I could go along. Babe, don't get me wrong. Okay, so we see more just more of this theme, going low, going to the ground. Saturn is also like the ground and the earth and like uh, detrivores and what is the word that I'm thinking of? Detritivores. There we go. People, not people, I guess people, creatures like worms uh, who deal with the decay and decomposition of earth and organic matter. So again, Hozier's speaker is associating with this Saturnian theme, working late where he's free from the phone. Now here the phone is operating as like a sort of Venusian significator in that it's something that's holding a relationship together because Venus is also about relationships and it's about exchange and intercourse and discourse. Uh, because they are inherently about trying to bridge the gap between two beings. And then he says to his lover, Who wants to live forever, babe? You treat your mouth as if it's heaven's gate. The rest of you like you're the TSA. Now, this is interesting because, again, there's the difference between, like, are you aspiring to longevity which is considered usually to be like a positive Saturnian outcome is l being able to live a long life as opposed to the sort of hedonistic live fast, die young, but like live it up while you're living vibe that is a very like rock star party hard Venusian ideal. So you see, there's like, inter there's the thing I love about this is that it's not like one is Venus and one is Saturn. It is they're both embodying the Venus Saturn vibe, but from different angles. So he goes, you treat your mouth as if it's heaven's gate. So this to me is again, implying that the lover is like super strict about the things that they put into their body, whether that be food, drink, substances, uh, maybe probably avoiding intoxicants, you treat your mouth as if it's heaven's gate, as if what you put in your body is going to determine how long you live, but also because heaven's gate. It's not just going to determine like how long you live, but also whether you're considered good or not, or like how virtuous you are, you know, like how heavenly are you, how divine are you. But again, that's a very like exalted ideal of divinity that conflates it with health and goodness in a way that can be very harmful when it's taken to like the extent of strictness of like judging yourself for like your measure of health being a measure of your goodness. 
That's the kind of thinking that taken to its extreme can lead to eugenicist thinking, where like life is only good if you are at a certain level of healthy, and if you aren't healthy, then your life is considered less valuable. And eugenicist ideas are a facet of white supremacy, as well as other extremist beliefs. So that can be a very negative, exalted manifestation of Venusian qualities. So not to say that Hozier's person in this song is going towards there, but just I'm pointing that out as an astrological correspondence of like, that's how far that archetype can go. This person is not at that level. This person is just, but they're being strict. They're treating their mouth as if it's heaven's gate and the rest of you like you're the TSA. So like you're determining, yeah, like what is okay to go in and what is allowed in terms of a value judgment of like, this is a good thing and this is a bad thing. Excuse me. And then Hozier's speaker says, I wish I could go along, babe, don't get me wrong. Implying that like, you know, maybe the speaker has tried to get on board with their lover and tried to live more like their lover does but have not found themselves able to live that way or have not found themselves wanting to live that way. Like they don't find it doable or they don't find it enjoyable or both. So then the next pre-chorus. Babe, don't get me wrong. You know, you're bright as the morning, as soft as the rain, pretty as a vine, sweet as a grape. If you can sit in a barrel, maybe I'll wait. But until that day, no, maybe I'll wait until that day, and then I'd rather take my whiskey and eat my coffee black in my bed at three. You're too sweet for me, you're too sweet for me. Repeat. So, here the lover explicitly takes on very Venusian sort of qualities in being bright as the morning. Venus famously is referred to as the morning star when she rises before the sun and is like the brightest object in the sky that is, you know, not the sun. As soft as the rain. Uh, softness is also a very Venusian quality. That sort of like luxurious, silken, velvet, fluffy vibe is very Venus. Soft as the rain, Venus and Pisces, water, rain, rain nourishes crops, very Venusian. Um, pretty as a vine, sweet as a grape. Venus rules over vegetables and plants and fruits as well, especially sweet things like grapes. Now here we get to a very interesting line that I love, because then Hozier Speaker says, if you can sit in a barrel, maybe I'll wait. And this is so, it's so Saturn and so Venus together because what happens when grapes sit in a barrel? They ferment and become wine. Wine, and if you wait long enough, they become cognac. <laughs> so Hozier's speaker is saying, you know, he's, he's like a whiskey drinking guy. And he's like talking about his lover. If she sits in a barrel, maybe he'll wait. So he's like implying that maybe he thinks if his lover like lives life a little bit and has time to let life experiences like penetrate her consciousness and ferment her and allow her to transform into someone who is a little bit more bitter and a little bit less like rigidly about like super strict health like living vibes, then maybe Hozier would wait for that because maybe they would be more compatible then. But again, he says, maybe I'll wait. And then until that day, I'd rather, you know, take my whiskey, eat coffee, black bed at three. So, you know, even wine or cognac is not whiskey. So he's implying that like, you know, maybe he feels like, you know, like maybe if she changes, then we could be compatible with each other. But like, Maybe even then, it's just not meant to be. But it's interesting because, like, on the other hand, it's like, maybe I'll wait, 
but until that day, I'll continue living life for me. And he's like, you know, if the lover changes and finds that the way she lives ends up more compatible with the way he lives, then maybe they could do that Venus-Saturn conjunction thing and be like a long-term commitment. Venus and Saturn conjunct is very long-term commitment vibes. Especially in Pisces, it's like a very like enduring and deep-rooted love that could even take on like spiritual soulmate kind of dimensions. So yeah, in summary, that is why Too Sweet, which the lyric video and the song came out on the day of an exact Venus-Saturn conjunction. I heard it. I've been losing my mind about it. I just had to talk about it, make a little video about it. Yeah, and so I hope that was an okay exploration of the Venus and Saturn in Pisces themes throughout this video. Let me know if there was anything that you were confused about, anything that I could have elaborated on, uh, if you liked it or not, you know, if you want to know more, if you want to know about anything else, if there are other astrology things you're curious about, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you're into this, let me know by liking the video. You can share if you like. Uh, subscribe to my channel so that way you'll see when I post more stuff like this. I don't know how to describe what I do other than that it's astrology and how it interacts with any and all areas of life that I'm interested in. Which right now is like, I'm getting back into music and media, so there's that. But like, there's a lot of world events and philosophies and concepts that I would like to connect astrology to, and I'm going to start working on that more hopefully this year. Because I posted a couple videos last year and then I took a long break and now I'm trying this again. And yeah, hopefully I'm just gonna see how many I can pop out while I have momentum and then if I take another break, I take another break. But you know, while I'm here, subscribe and join me on the journey of whatever I'm uncovering and analyzing via the absolutely delicious, delightful, celestial starry lens of astrology. And also maybe sometimes tarot and numerology and other stuff. But yeah, okay, thank you so much if you watched all the way to the end. Bye bye for now.